Hey, what's up guys? Max Engineer from the Pentagon Studios. Today, we have a little battle coming up. Raw vs JPEG. And I know it's unfair, but also really cool. May I introduce to you to the power of Raw. Before we dive a little deeper into the topic raw images, let us look at a little example to get started. Here are two photos I took with a Nikon Z6, where I underexposed for purpose, to show you the difference. On the left side you can see raw, and on the right JPEG. Not much difference, you think, a little bit more dynamic range on the raw one. But wait a second, let us bring them into Lightroom and expose them correctly. I underexposed a stop, so we bring that up in both pictures and use the exact same settings. And there you can see a huge benefit of RAW. While the JPEG falls apart and the information in the shadows is gone, everything is there in RAW. And you can barely tell the difference between this picture and the properly exposed one. Amazing! Now let us overexpose. Same story there, RAW brings it back, while JPEG loses the information in the highlights due to its limited dynamic range. But now let us go a little bit crazier, shall we? 4 stops. While the JPEG is destroyed, the raw one looks just fine. Magically. And when you perform some noise reduction, you aren't able to tell the difference. This ladies and gentlemen right there is the true power of raw. I was completely blown away when I first saw this, I mean come on if that isn't cool. But the question is, how is that even possible? Well, to answer that, we have to dive a little deeper into the topic. When you press the trigger on your camera, the camera sensor captures the light information. But what happens with this data? Well, with RAW, the only parameters that are baked into the file are focus, aperture, shutter speed and ISO. With JPEG, it's a different kind of story. First, the dynamic range is compressed and some crucial parameters like white balance and saturation are baked into the picture and under no circumstances you can change them without losing quality. Furthermore, the camera processes the image and does sharpening, contrast enhancement, noise reduction and it decides a color space. All of this information is irreversibly saved into your JPEG picture. And this is the huge benefit of RAW. You can change these things. If I take a picture for example and I need two versions, one in Adobe RGB for printing and one version as sRGB for my Instagram account. Makes sense not official, go check it out. I would have to take two separate pictures with JPEG, while in RAW I can decide afterwards in Lightroom which color space I would like to use. And the most important thing is that you can make mistakes as a photographer. And trust me, mistakes are happening all of the time, more than I'm comfortable admitting. While shooting RAW, my priority number one is focus. Because if the focus is off, even RAW cannot restore it. Priority number two is shutter speed, so I can control the amount of motion blur and sharpness in my image. And priority number three are the remaining parameters aperture and ISO to expose correctly. But I know that I can make up easily up to 3 steps afterwards, so it isn't that important. Everything else is unimportant. No white balance, no compression rates to care about. And this flexibility gives you much more creative freedom and time while shooting. A little example of that. As some of you guys may know, I'm a wildlife photographer. There everything happens quickly. If that rare bird is flying around the corner, you better be fast. No time to think about white balance, sRGB or to nail exposure. At that moment, everything that matters is that you get this shot, nail the focus and care about the other things later. And this is good to know, you can be relaxed at any time and you can deliver. Some other benefits of RAW are the greater dynamic range and 14-bit color reproduction. That means you get 16,348 shades of color. In comparison, 
With JPEG, you can only get 8 bit, which results in 265 shades of color per channel. But now you think there have to be downsides to RAW or what? Well, there are downsides. The biggest one being the huge file sizes. A RAW picture of my Nikon C6 with 24 megapixels is around 13 megabytes large. That is over 4 times the file size of JPEG. And there are cameras with even more megapixels like the Nikon C7 with 42 or the Sony A7R4 with 60 megapixels. There the file sizes are ridiculous. What that means for us is obviously you need lots and lots of storage space for your long term archive, you need large memory cards that are expensive and the handling of the files afterwards is a little bit more complicated. You need a better performing system to edit raw photos effectively, while you can edit JPEGs on pretty much every modern system. Furthermore, the pictures that are coming out of your camera aren't looking that great, and post production is necessary. So if you aren't into photo editing or aren't willing to spend time to edit every photo, raw is probably nothing for you. Speaking of editing, to edit raw photos, you need a specific raw converter. If that is built into your software or is integrated via plugin, depends on your software choice. The most popular raw converters are the integrated converters in Lightroom and Capture One, and of course, the Adobe Camera Raw plugin, which is integrated in Photoshop and After Effects. There are many more raw converters out there, but with this video, we won't go too much into the detail. I will provide a link below where you can check all of them out. And that leads us to another downside of RAW, its accessibility. Only professional cameras are allowing you to save pictures into the RAW format. You won't find that feature on your 50 bucks point and shoot camera, that's for sure. In addition, until now there isn't a standard format of RAW. Instead of that, every camera manufacturer has its own file extension. CR2 and CR3 by Canon, NEF by Nikon and DNG by Adobe, to give you a few examples. And that wide variety of format leads to even more problems while editing, because if your editing software of choice doesn't support the format of your camera, you're screwed. So what means that all for us in conclusion? Well, it's a bit difficult. The question is if that even should be possible. I mean, if RAW should allow a photographer to make that much mistakes. In my opinion, it should be an option to not rely on. You shouldn't go out shooting with the resolution to not care about exposure or everything else. For myself, I try to nail the picture right in camera so that I save time in post production and I try to use the ridiculous options of RAW as less as possible. So that pretty much wraps it up for this video. If you liked what you just saw, and found it helpful, consider subscribing. That's all for now. See ya!